be the genius. Hey guys, how's the connection? I was scared. I thought I'd have to uh, <clears throat> delete and try it again. Connection good? Connection good? Okay, everything good? Okay. Guys, can I ask you a question? Okay, can I guys ask you a question? You guys ready for my question? Why is it Anna growing? Sister, help me to help you. Let me deal with this guy. Anna, I know you're zealous. And a Muslim Abdullah, are you listening? Muslim Abdullah, are you listening? I'm talking to you, so you better listen if you don't want to get blocked. Okay? Muslim Abdullah. Okay, let's just make sure he's listening. Okay. Uh, Muslim Abdullah, you're going to call me on Skype right now because not only I'm going to answer your question, I'm going to embarrass you and turn it against your God and your prophet. So call me on Skype because like a little dog, you know I'm talking about how filthy your prophet is, but you came and changed the subject. So call me on Skype right now. You see what these dogs do? You see what these demons do? We're going to talk about how filthy Muhammad is. So what they do is try to divert the topic, change the topic, so we don't expose that Muhammad was a filthy, immoral son of Satan. You guys caught it? And you guys are falling for their schemes. And you guys are falling for their schemes. Because you're engaging this guy on a topic that has nothing to do with what we're discussing. <clears throat> so now, Christians, can I ask you something? Christians, can I ask you something? You guys are born of the Spirit. You belong to Jesus. Why is it so easy for you guys to be duped, deceived, <clears throat> hoodwinked? And why is it so easy that you allow Satan to use you unbeknownst to you? See? Okay. See now, neighbor boys, you see that? You know the topic is Muhammad's morality. You let this Muhammadan come to my chat to discuss a question that he doesn't want an answer to, and he never shows up when we are talking about the Trinity, but he all of a sudden conveniently shows up when we're about to expose Muhammad being a filthy, immoral son of Satan. So now I'm going to use him as an example. Yeah, I'm very scared. Muslim Abdullah, what would you say if a man came to your mother and said, I want to marry her for three days and then divorce her and give her some money? Muslim Abdullah, answer my question. Let's see who's afraid of their revelation and their scripture. Jesus Christ is the Lord. You don't want me to block you around, right? Do you want me to block you? You're not listening to me, Jesus Christ is the Lord? Okay. Muslim Abdullah, one more time. I know you're ashamed of your prophet. You're embarrassed by your prophet because you know he's filthy. But I'm not going to let you run. What would you say to a man who comes to your mother who's widowed and says, I want to marry you for three days and then pay you and divorce you? What would you say to that man? What would you say to that man? No, you're actually Muhammad's lapdog. You're like your prophet, a dog of Muhammad, a filth of Muhammad. So one more time. Muslim Abdullah, what would you say if a man comes to your mother who's widowed and says, I want to marry you for three days, and when I'm done with you, I divorce and give you money. Final time before I send you to Mecca. To smooch the black stone like your pagan prophet. Let's try it. And, uh, but you're afraid of your prophet. See? Okay. See, he's afraid of his prophet. Okay? He's afraid of his prophet. I know you're afraid of your prophet. Why are you afraid? Because he's so embarrassing. You're afraid of him because you know to speak for him is going to embarrass you and your family. One more time, Muslim Abdullah. You've got now one minute to answer the question. I send you to Mecca to smooch the black stone like your pagan prophet did. What would you say to a man who comes to your mother who's widowed, comes to your mother who's widowed, and says, I want to marry you for three days and then divorce and give you money? What would you say? And I'm giving you a simple question, too, about the filth of your prophet, that your prophet was an immoral, filthy son of Satan, and you're ashamed to defend him. And I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised because I'm ashamed of Muhammad for you. Muslim Abdul Shaitan. Muslim Abdul Shaitan. You're going to answer? you got 20 seconds. He's not going to call me. He just said he doesn't have Skype because it costs money to get Skype. 
see because it costs money saudi oil to get skype oh so you're upset at me a man of god talking like this but you're not upset at muhammad who raped women treated them like whores treated your mother like a whore raped women like your mother but he's a man of god see you're filthier than muhammad now send them back to mecca get them out of here at mods get them out of here get them out of here <clears throat> please mods let's do it quick okay now guys christians honestly my brothers and sisters in jesus christ can i get your attention my brothers and sisters in jesus christ can i get your attention guys can i get your attention okay can i ask you why why are you christians so gullible to be duped by satan to be used by satan unbeknownst to you meaning you're you're not consciously aware that satan is using you to distract when are you going to learn the schemes of satan when are you going to learn not to fall for his schemes and be used indirectly by him you saw the topic right muhammad's morality muhammad's morality examined what did you guys do a son of satan comes in here talks about the trinity all the other times that I talk about the Trinity, yesterday I talked about the Trinity, the day before I talk about the Trinity, the day before that, this Mohammedan stone smoocher didn't show up. Right? When does he show up? When I'm talking about Muhammad's morality examine. Because he knows his prophet is filthy. He is the scum of the devil. He doesn't want us to focus on Muhammad, to expose Muhammad, so that non-Muslims will see how filthy and immoral Muhammad was. So he wants to now distract and talk about something not related, and you fall for it. And you guys fall for it. Why? Why do you guys fall for it? Can you help me understand? Why do you guys fall for their schemes? The one time I decide not to talk about Christianity, the one time that I decide to focus on Muhammad to punish the Muslims for going around slandering the brethren, especially me, is the one time a Mohammedan shows up to talk about Jesus being God and having a God, but he never shows up in the previous sessions, and you don't see it for what it is, and you fall for the bait, and you run with it, and you engage him. Why is that? See, I expect Muslims to do what they do. They are demonized, influenced by sin, until the Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy sets them free. And our prayers, Lord Jesus, Son of God, Save them as you saved us. We're not better than them. <clears throat> we are wicked, sinful maggots. We struggle with sinful passions and succumb to them. And we need your Holy Spirit to save us from our flesh and purify us to make us holy for your glory, Lord Jesus. We're not better than them. As you have pity on us, have pity on them. Here's my question. Why do you fall for it? I expect them to do what children of Satan to do. But why Christians? My hard time is not with unbelievers my difficulties with christians my brothers and sisters in christ who just don't get it you just don't get it why is it that you fall so quickly for the schemes of the devil can you guys help me understand honestly help me understand why are you guys my brothers and sisters in christ who have been given the wisdom of the spirit so gullible I don't get it, man. And then some of you answer incorrectly. Some of you, I was watching some of your answers. You're answering incorrectly. Okay. Which means you're not listening to these sessions and learning what you're supposed to learn in order to know how to more correctly articulate what you believe. All right. Yeah. I mean, guys, you got to stop, man. You're not of the world. You're not of the world. You don't think like the world. You don't war like the world does. You are of God. You belong to heaven. Christ has purchased you. You're born of the spirit. And God has given you wisdom. And someone just mentioned the passage. Be wise as snakes, serpents, and innocent as doves. Be wise as snakes and innocent as doves. Matthew 10, verse 16. Matthew 10, verse 16. 
Matthew 10, verse 16. Let's post that. Yeah. Is a Protestant here? I don't know. I thought he was. Did he take a break? Protestant, you left? All right. Let me get the verses. I guess he Okay. Thank you. Behold, <clears throat> I send you forth as sheep in the midst of the wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. One more time, brother. Thank you, truth seeker. God bless you. One more time, Matthew 10, verse 16. As the Holy Spirit enables me to recall the passages perfectly, correctly, destroy my forget forgetfulness, destroy my flesh, crucify my flesh, to not walk in the flesh, but war against my flesh by his power for the glory of Jesus. Okay, Matthew 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you. <clears throat> Listen, guys. Listen to the verse as I'm reading it. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So Jesus is saying, I'm sending you in the midst of the wolf, in the midst of wolves. The world is full of wolves, ravenous wolves. You are sheep. You're not a wolf. You don't attack like a wolf. You don't behave like a wolf. You're a sheep. But because you're a sheep, you need to know the strategy of the wolves. You need to know the mindset of wolves in order to safeguard against their scheming. You don't act like them. The wise as snakes. Well, snakes means know how Satan and his children think because snake is a reference to Satan. Snakes, reference to the children of Satan. Know how Satan and his children think, but don't act like them. Don't be like them. Don't adopt their methods. See? Be wise as snakes, innocent as doves, harmless as doves. You catch it? And it's not, it's not a coincidence, folks. Dove is the image referring to the Holy Spirit. How did the Holy Spirit appear? As an innocent dove. So you see what Jesus is doing in that passage? See, now I'm teaching the Bible again. Now I'm bringing you the meat of Scripture. He's contrasting those who are of, of the Holy Spirit and those who are of the devil. Do you know that? Well, look at it again. Look at it again. Snake, reference to Satan. Dove, reference to the Holy Spirit. You are doves because you belong to the Holy Spirit. Those who are not born of the Holy Spirit are snakes, are serpents. They belong to Satan. Okay? Do I need to show you that snake slash serpent means Satan? Yes, I think I do. Revelation 12, verse 9. Okay, brother, God bless you. Refresh you. Revelation 12, verse 9. Let me show you. Who is the serpent, the snake? Nachash in Hebrew. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil and Satan. The old serpent, called the devil and Satan. The old serpent, who is the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Why doves? Let's go to Matthew 3, verse 16. Matthew 3, verse 16. Why doves? Smokey, thank you, brother. Guys, I forgot to mention, Smokey Saint is also an apologist who's passionate for the Lord Jesus Christ, and he debates atheists in various groups. So pray for him that the Lord Jesus will fill him and perfect him and be glorified through him and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Smokey Saint has a YouTube channel. Just a couple of days ago, we did a live stream together, impromptu. He wasn't expecting me to be there, but I showed up. Go to Smokey Saint, subscribe, watch his videos, like, because we need to support all these brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to support their channels. We need to support them because we want more people in the battlefield. He debates atheists and others for the glory of Jesus. He's passionate about the triune God. Support the brother. Support him. Yes. I don't have his link, but... Give us your link, brother. Smokey Saint. Now, Matthew 3.16, why are we to, to be harmless as doves? Matthew 3.16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. Okay, did you guys catch it? You see, there are two groups. Those who are serpents, snakes, those who are doves. The serpents... Because they are children of the serpent Satan. Doves, because we are born of the Holy Spirit. We belong to the Holy Spirit. 
and the Holy Spirit himself appeared in bodily shape as a dove. Is it making sense now? Now I'm taking a moment to unpack that passage. As the Holy Spirit illuminates me for the glory of Jesus and saves me from my own flesh and forgives me and washes me in the blood of Jesus. Now I'll pack it. So be wise as serpents, snakes, innocent, harmless as doves. Point being, know how Satan works. Know how his strategy, how he, <clears throat> what his MO is, right? His modus operandi, mode of operation. Know his strategies, his schemings, so you can guard yourself and not fall prey and be duped by his schemes, but don't act like him and don't employ his tactics. Everyone got it? You understand what you're being told here? So I can begin a prayer, we can begin. But unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, and I try, I'm trying, I'm asking the Holy Spirit to make me holy and pure and save me from my own flesh and hypocrisy. Cleanse me in the blood of Jesus and give me the grace to be like Jesus, holy and pure and righteous and loving. I want to be the best possible teacher I can be for the glory of Jesus so I can bless you. And I want to encourage you. And just like the Lord is patient with me, I need to be patient with all of you. But honestly, brethren, why are you so easily duped into being distracted and falling prey for the schemes of Satan? Shut your mouth buddy sorry that was traffic do i need to explain that gray satan is a murderer so you start murdering those who follow satan satan is a gossiper so you start gossiping and slander people like those who follow satan great come on man come on brother don't hurt me when you say that whatever method satan employs distraction gossip slander, causing riots and chaos and fighting. That's what you do not do. You want me there? Just like this Muhammad came, what did he do? Distracted. That's a scheme of Satan. We're going to expose Muhammad for being a fifth, filthy, immoral son of Satan. So what does Satan do? Send a Muslim to distract us so we can go off topic. And we fall for it. Yeah, Jesus has a God because David, you see? Right? Honestly, let me take this minute to hammer this point by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray the Holy Spirit takes over and leads and washes us in the blood of Jesus, forgives us in Jesus' name. Okay. Honestly, you don't see what happened. You didn't see that as a satanic distraction. Look at the topic, Muhammad's morality examined. What are the odds a Muslim comes and asks me a question about the Trinity when all the topics up to this point have been about the Trinity. For the past month, more than a month, what have I been talking about? All of a sudden he shows up today on a topic that has nothing to do with the Trinity and ask, and you don't see it for what it is? Come on. Okay, buddy, I'm glad you got me. All right. So come on, guys, focus. Focus. Hopefully this will sink in. This will be etched in your hearts and your minds. Not to fall prey for the schemes of Satan. Do not let Satan use you. How does he use you? You come into the session. I'm talking about X. You talk about Y and Z. And you gauge and side talk with others about Y and Z. Distracting others from not focusing on sex, uh, X. And you yourself are not focusing on the topic. That's being used of the devil. You know that, right? I'm talking about Jesus is God, and you're talking about whether tongues are for today or not, or what did Jesus mean that this generation will not pass? And nothing to do with this topic. Then you start another topic in the comment section. Distract others. Distract yourself so you don't focus on the topic and learn about that topic that's being used of the devil. That's being used of the devil. Even Christians can be used of the devil, devil unbeknownst to them because they're asleep. They're not alert. They're not aware to his schemes. See, once you're aware of a scheme, once you ask a question, 
that's not related topic. Oops. See, that's what Satan wants. He wants me to bring up a question not related to the topic so I can distract people from losing attention and focus on the topic so they don't learn this topic. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, give me power to focus. You see? Clear? Is it clear now? So I can begin in prayer. You can tell focus. We can focus now. Exactly is. Let me give you one more passage. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. What does Paul say about Satan? 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. What does Paul say about Satan? Second Corinthians 2 verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Wow, Paul, the spirit-filled holy slave of Jesus. He says, we are not ignorant of his devices. We are aware of his schemes. That's why he can't pull a fast one over us. See that? Satan's not going to take advantage of us. Because we are not ignorant of his devices. We know how he thinks. We know how he acts. We know the enemy. He's not going to pull a fast one over us. Can we be like that? Can we be like Paul? Do you think we can be like Paul? Ask the Holy Spirit to fill us the way he filled Paul. Ask the Holy Spirit to make us like Paul in his wisdom and knowledge, understanding of the faith, in his passion and zeal and love for Jesus Christ, and the way he preached, the way he lived, the way he proclaimed. So we, too, won't be hoodwinked by Satan. Smokey Saint, thank you, brother. You don't need to post. Protestant believer will. But thank you anyway, brother. God bless you. Can we? Can we? If you say yes, we can, then are you now going to ask the Spirit to give you the power of self-control? I pray he gives me the power of self-control, self-restraint, and not be used of the devil to distract and cause people to lose focus. Let's see. And are you going to be wise and spot an agent of Satan coming into the comment section to engage you to debate him on a point not related topic to distract you and others? Let's see. Let's see. But honestly, let's see. Why do you think I'm so tough and I try to run a tight ship and I'm very, quote unquote, harsh, specifically with Christian brothers and sisters? I expect children of Satan to act like Satan. But I don't expect Christians who love Jesus to be used of the devil, even in their innocence. Be wise, guys. Come on. Be wise. Yeah. That's why John C. is going to get out of here. John C. will never come to my channel. He'll remain permanently blocked. John C., get lost. You don't like it? Uh, anyway. And I spent 10 minutes because it was necessary. But John C., an arrogant know-it-all know who thinks he's spiritual, he may even be a fake, not even a Christian, another tool of the devil, thinks that I'm going on a 10-minute rant when I'm not. This is necessary. You know why? As I told you, my passion is to be used the Holy Spirit to teach you your faith. So I'm glad I took 10 minutes to hammer this point because you Christians who love Jesus, this is necessary for it to sink in. Thank you, Vagabond. Lord Jesus bless you. Right? No, I'm glad he got blocked. If you're going to come here and bark and foam like a dog, what do you do with a rabid dog? You muzzle him. Shut up. Put you back in your doghouse. And let's glorify Jesus. So, Father, we love you. Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Father, please forgive us. Forgive me for my moral failures. Forgive me for my imperfections and sinful passions. Father, I ask. Many of us do struggle with the flesh, Father. You know it better <clears throat> than anyone because you are God Almighty who sees all things. So, Father, we ask for the sake of the Lord Jesus. In your infinite love, compassion, and mercy and pity, have mercy on us. Pity us, wash us in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us the power not to succumb to our flesh, to crucify our flesh, to hate the fruit of the flesh, overcome the flesh by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and not use it as an excuse to 
<clears throat> succumb and indulge the flesh. Keep us pure for the glory of Jesus. And when we fail, Father, convict us by your spirit to overcome, to resume the race, and resume the intense spiritual training and discipline by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not to stay fallen, indulging in the flesh. Please, Father, have mercy. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Purify us in your blood and make us like you, Lord Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, possess us fully. Fully possess us and enslave us to yourself completely and perfectly. Take over our entire beings, our bodies, our souls, our spirits, our hearts, the desires of our hearts, our minds, the thoughts of our minds, our minds' eyes, our mouths, the words of our mouths. Every part of us belongs to you wholly, completely, Holy Spirit, completely and entirely. Crucify our flesh and fill us with fruit from your presence, life from your presence, power from your presence, wisdom and knowledge, understanding and love from your presence, and give us self-control, self-restraint, and teach us to be spiritually disciplined, to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, wash, cleanse in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, sacrifices pleasing to the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask that you bless our loved ones, my daughters, seal them, seal them, Holy Spirit, seal our loved ones. Wash them in the blood of Jesus Christ. Cause them to be born from above, born from your presence. Our loved ones were not saved. My daughters, that they'll be one with Jesus. And secure them in the love of Christ. Secure us in the love of Christ. And please, Holy Spirit, take over this session. Give me the power to accurately represent what this religion teaches. To expose Muhammad as a son of Satan who's crushed under the feet of the Lord Jesus. And who's now in hell where he deserves to be for blaspheming Jesus and misleading billions to hell. Save the Muslims from this man and bring them to the light of Jesus Christ. And save me from error and stammering and confusion and bless them to understand and absorb and proclaim it for the glory of Jesus and destroy our fear of death, fear of Satan and his children. Give us grace to only fear you, to fear the Lord Jesus, to fear the Father, to be in love with you, to be in love with Jesus, to be in love with the Father. And fill my lungs and chest and my heart and my throat with, with life and health to, to be used to glorify Jesus and make us holy unto the Lord to delight his heart. Take over, Holy Spirit, please, and bless the connection. Please, Holy Spirit, take over. And not just in our sessions, take over our lives. Take over my life. Please, I beseech you, own us completely. You were sent by Jesus to save us, to teach us, to discipline us, to perfect us and secure us. And you're the almighty spirit, the all-sovereign eternal spirit of the Father and the Son. And we trust in you. We hope in you. We love you. And we cling to you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in Jesus' name. We love you, Bobby. We love you, Abba. We love you, Lord Jesus, Son of God. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' almighty name, Yahweh, Father, Holy Spirit. Bring them, Lord. Bring them, Lord. Bring them. In Jesus' almighty name, Yahweh, Father, Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, because it's about hadiths, I'm going to give you some articles. It's not like the Bible where we can quote the verses. A lot of this information comes from narrations attributed to Muhammad, Muslim scholars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the articles. Here it is. Save these articles. These articles are for you Christians called to witness to Muslims. So save these links. You have my permission to upload them to your websites. Even make YouTube clips using the information. Spread this message, disseminate this message until every Christian knows how filthy and immoral Islam is so that they can then share it with Muslims so Muslims will see what a wickedly immoral son of Satan Muhammad was so that the Lord Jesus will save them from his filth. But then you need to preach the gospel, showing them that Muhammad is filthy, like Abdul Jabbar, who won't be able to defend his prophet and the filth of his prophet, doesn't mean they become Christian. Then you have to then introduce them to the infinite beauty and majesty of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, do you guys want me to use Abdul Jabbar as a proof that he won't be able to defend the filth of Muhammad, but he's ashamed of Muhammad and will run from defending Muhammad? Do you guys want me to use him as a proof? You guys ready? Okay. Abdul Jabbar, are you listening? Guys, save that link. I gave it to you and I got a couple more articles. So thank God. Maybe the Lord sent him for me to use him as a case study. Okay, Abdul Jabbar, are you there? Because you're going to defend Muhammad. You're going to defend your prophet. Okay, my friend, what would you do if someone comes to your unmarried sister, unmarried sister, or your widowed mother? Let's say your mother is widowed, your father died, 
and said, I'm going to marry your sister, your mother for three days. When I'm done, I'll divorce her and give her some money. What would you say to that man? Abdul Jabbar. Let's see if you're not ashamed of Muhammad. D, you are. Can you help me not to help me? Help me by not helping me, D. How? Please. Guys, this is where you need to control yourselves. Okay. See, Gray did it again. It's a shame Christians can't control themselves, honestly. I'm trying to set up this man, and they're already talking about it. Gray V and D. How? Okay. Okay. And I'm going to now embarrass you with the cultural context of Muhammad's day because I want to bear your profit by that appeal to cultural context. Okay. Why would you be displeased today? Why would you be displeased in the cultural context? Why? Let's, let's use this guy, Abdul Jabbar, who's going to now help me bury Muhammad for the glory of Jesus. Hey, guys. Why would you be displeased today? Yeah. That didn't answer the question. Let's try this again. Why would you be displeased today with someone wanting to sleep with your mother for three days and then pay her money, calling it marriage and divorce? See, you see how they tap dance? Because they're ashamed of their wicked prophet. Now, your Shia brothers, they still do it. How come NATO didn't influence them? So if you're in Iran, where Iran says it's okay, so you'd be okay with someone doing a Shia doing your mother that way? Let's go to Iran. Okay? In Iran, they say that's okay. So if you're in Iran, not NATO, but you're in Iran, and the Iranians say that's okay, so you're okay with a man saying, I'm going to marry your mother for three days, defile her and divorce her, and then pay her money. So if you're in Iran, would you be okay with that? Forget NATO. Let's talk about Iran. Your Shia brothers. No, they call it Messiah Constance. Hold on. Just don't get too excited. So if your mother and you are in Iran, would you be okay with that? You're not answering the question. You're wasting my time, friend. If you're going to waste my time, you need to go then. Iran is not influenced by... NATO, they're influenced by your prophet Ali and the imams. So you're not going to answer if your mommy and you and your sister are in Iran and a man says, I'm going to take your sister for three days and give her 150 bucks and then I'm going to divorce her and I'm going to do the same with your mom. So it's okay. Oh, I see. See? So he's just saying it's okay in Iran for his mother and his sister to be prostituted, treated as whores. Did you guys see that? He just said it's okay. And you wonder why you need to expose Muhammad? Did you just catch it? You wonder why you need to expose Muhammad? Only a sick, demented, demonized tool of the devil would say it's okay for his mother and sister to be dishonored that way because that's what his prophet did. That's what his prophet did. Yeah, he just said it. Here, let me read it for you. Look, look. Look, look. Yeah, it's okay for Iran because they're they're they've not been system systemically oppressed by NATO to support moral systems. I wouldn't be okay with that, however. I will just watch you if I'm wasting time, my friend. So it's okay in Iran. Even though personally he's not okay with it, it's okay in Iran. Okay. I'm gonna give you a third and final chance to answer the question. Third and final chance to answer your question. If you are in Iran, would you be okay with your mother and sister doing that in Iran where NATO has an influence in Iran? You didn't answer the question. Would you be okay with it as a follower of Muhammad? Or did Muhammad not give you any morality, moral laws? And you're going to see why I'm asking him this question. You're going to see why I'm asking him this question, because this is what Muhammad did to one of his followers. This question comes from Muhammad, his prophet. You'll see. Guys, I'm actually using Muhammad's own argument, the logic he employed to one of his own followers. You'll see. So let's see if he answers this final time. If not, we're going to go into the topic, because he's a waste of time. He has no honor. He has no shame, because he'll allow his mother and sister to be dishonored 
for Allah and his messenger. Right? But I'm going to show you why I asked that question. As we're doing, save these articles. Okay, Here are the articles. More articles for you to save. More articles for you to save. Are you ready? Here you go. Save this one. This is now the second article I gave you. I gave the link twice to the second article. Okay? You probably wouldn't. Hmm, probably. You know this guy's sick and he's been demented by Muhammad's teaching to say, I probably wouldn't. You probably wouldn't. How do you answer someone like that? Anyway, save that article. Now here's the other article I want you to save. Here's the art other article I want you to save. I want to give you several articles. Now here's the third article. Because everything I'm going to say comes from the articles and we'll put them in the description bo box so that others can have access to the articles. Here's the third article. Guys, ignore him now. He can stay here and listen as long as he doesn't go on tangents. Abdul Jabbar, sit and listen. Hopefully by the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be convicted and ashamed of your religion. Do not go into tangents and change the subject. You can listen and hopefully you'll be convicted because that's the work of the Holy Spirit. I just gave you now a third article. Save those articles. Now here's the fourth article. The fourth article for today. Guys, you have to save these articles. You have my permission to upload them to your YouTube channels. You have my permission to distribute them, even make YouTube videos using the material because we want to disseminate this information for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, that said, why did I ask him the question? Let's begin. Because here I'm going to expose Muhammad was immoral and inconsistent. He was morally inconsistent because he was quite immoral <clears throat> and wicked and filthy. Okay. Here is a narration. This comes from my article. This comes from the commentary on chapter 17, verse 32 of the Quran from Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, I believe this is, a, yes, it has to be Ibn Kathir because it's linked. In the article, even though the website with Ibn Kathir is now defunct, this is a narration that I took from Ibn Kathir on chapter 17, verse 32 of the Quran. Chapter 17, verse 32 of the Quran. Unfortunately, the URL is now defunct. Because that website that had the abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir shut down. I wonder why. But thank the Lord Jesus that abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir is still online for free. You can go to alim, alim.com, A-L-I-M.com. Now, are you guys ready? Because I'm going to do a lot of reading. I can't share it all because this is not like Bible verses you can copy and paste real fast. So are you guys now ready to go into the meat? Here we're going to expose Muhammad for the glory of Jesus. Expose these evil, rotten, immoral tools of the devil whom Satan has unleashed on the world to mislead mankind. Look at Muhammad, how inconsistent he is, how disgustingly inconsistent he is because he says one thing to one Muslim but does the exact opposite going against his own advice. What do I mean? Let's read. Imam Ahmed recorded Abu Umama. Abu Yomama, no, I'm just kidding. Abu Umama saying that a young man came to the Prophet and said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, give me permission to commit zinna. Notice what he's asking Muhammad. Give me a license to commit zinna. For those of you who don't know what zinna is, that's sexual immorality, meaning to have sexual intercourse with people. So zinna is the Arabic term for unlawful sexual relations. That can mean premarital sex or adultery. So what is he asking Muhammad? Give me permission to commit zinna, unlawful sex. The people surrounded him rebuked him saying, stop, stop. But the prophet said, now watch. Watch what the prophet, right? Prophet said. Okay, watch here. Okay, here's where we're going to have fun, folks. We're beginning. This is a lesson for those Muslims. Anytime you try to do videos slandering me, attacking me, taking statements from court files to make me look evil, I'm not going to attack you. I'm going to expose your prophet and disgrace him for the filthy, wicked, immoral son of Satan that he is. And if you do it to anyone that I love, David and others, I'm going to punish your prophet for the glory of Jesus. So keep barking and watch what we do to your prophet for the glory of Jesus Christ. So you've been warned. Let's see how much you love your prophet. Okay, now, the prophet said, I'm going to read now. The prophet said, <clears throat> come close. The young man came to him and he said, sit down. So he sat down. The prophet said, would you like it 
unlawful sex for your mother? Now you guys see why I'm asking the question. If someone says, Sam, you're being mean, you're being rude, you're being nasty, you're, you're not being Christ-like. When you ask them, would you like it if someone did it to your mother? I'm simply following Muhammad's example. I'm simply using Muhammad's strategy. Because he says to the man, look what he says. Would you like it, right, if they did it for your mother? He said, no, by Allah, may I be ransomed for you. The Prophet said, neither do the people like it for their mothers. So if you don't want someone to do it to your mother, don't do it to their mothers. Wow, brilliant, Muhammad. The Prophet said, would you like it for your daughter? He said, no, by Allah, may I be ransomed for you. The Prophet said, neither do the people like it for their daughters. The Prophet said, would you like it for your sister? He said, no, by Allah, may I be ransomed for you. The Prophet said, neither do the people like it for their sisters. The Prophet said, would you like it for your paternal aunt? He said, no, by Allah, O Allah's messenger, may I be ransomed for you. The Prophet said, neither do the people like it for their paternal aunts. The Prophet said, would you like it for your maternal aunt? He said, no, by Allah, O Allah's messenger, may I be ransomed for you. The Prophet said, neither do the people like it for their mater maternal aunts. And then the Prophet put his hand on him and said, oh Allah, forgive his sin, purify his heart, and guard his chastity. After that, the young man never paid attention to anything of that nature. Now, do you understand why Christians, I will tell a Muslim, would you like it if a man came to your mother and said, I'm going to marry her for three days and divorce her and give her money? You see, I'm adopting Muhammad's strategy. Remember, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Know the schemes of Satan. So here's the son of Satan. I know his strategy. I'm now using it against him to glorify Jesus. Did you catch it now? There's a method to my madness. See what I'm doing? You get it now? Okay. You see? So notice what Muhammad said. People don't like it if you do it to their woman folk, right? So why would you do it to their woman folk? Just like you don't like it if they do it to your woman. In other words, what Muhammad was operating under was what Jesus said. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. Thank you, Vagabond. God bless you. And Lord Jesus, watch over you. Did you catch it? Muhammad is operating under that principle of Christ. What's Christ's principle? Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. In other words, just like I don't want someone to defile my daughters, defile my sisters, dishonor my mother, commit adultery with my wife, I won't do it to others. Brilliant, right? What Muhammad said. But because he's a hypocrite, an immoral, vile hypocrite, he did not practice what he preached. Because now I'm going to show you Muhammad raping women who are married in the name of his God, prostituting women, calling it temporary marriage in the name of his God, lusting for his adopted son's wife, resulting in his, his adopted son divorcing her so he can have her and sleep with her in the name of his God, and then destroying adoption as a result. Are you not ready for it? Now, you can quote this Quranic verse, chapter 4, verse 24 of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 24 of the Quran. Watch here. One of you guys, I think Protestant, you can do that, right? This one you can quote. We'll read it. Okay, I'm going to explain to you why this verse was revealed. Chapter 4, verse 24. We're going to put the links to the articles in the description box, God willing. Okay, read this verse with me. Thank you, first and last. Read this verse for, with me. Pickthal, and all married women are forbidden unto you, except save those captives whom your right hands possess. It is a decree of Allah for you. Lawful unto you are all beyond those mentioned, so that ye seek them with your wealth in honest wedlock, not debauchery, and those of whom ye seek content by marrying them, Give unto them their portions as a duty, their dowries. And there is no sin for you. There is no sin for you. <clears throat> I got to find the place. Lost it, okay? Have been done, so la la. Uh, unto their portions. And there is no sin for you in that what you do by mutual agreement after the duty hath been done. Lo, Allah is ever know or wise. Notice the first part. And all married women are forbidden unto you, save those captives whom you put your right hands possess. Now, most of you already know this. Those of you in following, 
Christian apologists to Muslims, you already know this. If you've been following David Wood, you already know this. You know this. So I'm preaching to the choir, but thank you for being here anyway. And it doesn't hurt to hear something over and over again until, by the grace of God, it becomes second nature. Notice what the passage says. It says to Muslims, forbidden sexual relations. You cannot sleep with a married woman, except it's a married woman that your right hands possess. Now, what in the world does that mean? Uh, and I'm going to read the narrations, why this passage was revealed. According to Muhammad and his God, if you capture a married woman in battle, she's literally your booty. She's literally your booty. Once you take her captive, she's your possession. Even if she's married, you can have sex with her to your heart's desire and sell her off, even if her husband's still alive. And Allah says, that's your right. Allah says, that's your right. Again, where am I getting this from? If you've saved the articles, it's in the article. Let me give you the articles again. Here it is. There's two of them. Here it is. Here's the one that I was quoting from. So it's right there. So why was this passage revealed? When I say revealed, obviously it's not revelation from God. Sunan Abu Dawood, volume 2, number 2150. Sunan Abu Dawood. Volume 2, number 2150. And you can read this hadith by going to sunnah.com. S-U-N-N-A-H.com. S-U-N-N-A-H.com. In fact, let me let me look it up there to see the grading. If it's sahih. Here, let me get it for you. Why even? Here, let's do this. Here, sunnah.com. Here you go. Thank yourselves, Muslims, for, for this. Because, guess what? Because of this, I'm going to take it out on your prophet. So glory to Jesus Christ. Anytime you try to attack me and slander me, I'm nothing. But I will take it out on your prophet and disgrace him for the glory of Jesus. Here you go. Here it is. Okay, let's find it. Okay, let's find it. Sometimes you got it. Uh-huh, here you go. There it goes. Here it is for you to read online for free. Here it is. Sunan Abi Dawood. There it is right there, folks. You know, I'm not making it up. Hadith number 2150 in English. What's the grade? Sahih. Sound. And it was graded by Sheikh El Albani, who Salafis consider one of the greatest Hadith scholars, if not the greatest Hadith scholar of the 20th century. Okay? There it is, guys. It's right there. Sahih. Now let me read it for you. It's right there, folks. Right there. JC, which collection isn't later, JC? Are you being a smart aleck? Which Hadith collection isn't later? Thank you for the distraction, but I want you to answer it. Name me a Hadith collection that's not later. Is Bukhari later? Yes, 9th century, about 20 years after death Muhammad. What about Muslim? What about Abi Dawood? You do not have any Hadith collection written in the first generation of Muhammad that survived that extent. Okay? The oldest you get is sources that are 100 years after the time of Muhammad. So what kind of question are you asking me? The Muslims don't care if it's late. They care for its grading. And its grading is sahih, meaning sound. Come on, JC, brother. Don't hurt me, bro. Don't hurt me so I don't hurt you. Love me so I can love you. Right? Love me and I love you back. Love me and I love you back. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Hit me and I'll hit you back. But anyway, I'm using the sources that Sunnis deem to be authentic. To me, the entire religion is a joke built on sand, sinking sand, and it's sinking into the pit of hell. But they believe it's authentic. So I'm quoting their sources that they believe to show what an immoral, wicked, evil, vile person Muhammad was. Now, let's read the narration. Are you ready? Let's read it. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri said, the apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Al-Qas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Now, guys, pay attention. Some of the companions of the apostle of Allah were reluctant to have intercourse with the female captives. Why? In the presence of their husbands were unbelievers. It shows that Muhammad's men 
had more moral conviction, were on a higher moral standard than even Muhammad and his God because they felt convicted, felt ashamed. How can we sleep with these women? Their husbands are alive. That's adultery. So what did Muhammad and his God do? So Allah, the exalted, said down the chronic verse, and all married women are forbidden unto you, save those whom your right hand possesses. So what did Allah say? Chapter 4, verse 24. Go ahead. Have no conviction. Feel no shame. Feel no guilt. This is my blessing on you. So literally, they're your booty. Do what you want. Who cares their husband's alive? Once they're in your possession, that's it. You own them. You own them. You with it? You're there? You understand? Okay, now, ladies, let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask the ladies a question. How excited would you be to sleep with a man who just got done attacking your city, your village, your town, town murdered your friends and loved ones, take, takes you and your husband captive, and if you have children, your children, and wants to now have sex with you? You're going to say, okay, go ahead. Sure, I'm all up for it. Let's do it. Come on, honey. Which woman, if she has an ounce of decency, an ounce of decency would voluntarily sleep with her captor while her husband's alive? So not only is this rape, because nowhere in the Quran or the tradition of Muhammad says you got to get their permission. Their permission means nothing. They're your property. You own them. Not only is this rape, it's adultery. Rape and adultery. Sanctioned by Allah and his messenger. Are you with me there? Rape and adultery made lawful by Allah and his messenger. You catching it now? Why do you think I get livid and angry, livid and angry when I hear Christian women who claim to love Jesus in love with Muslim men? Okay. Just recently, I had a talk with someone who had a Muslim man dupe her into falling in love with him, Christian sister. Okay. Let me just say this. I'm sorry for sounding harsh. I'm sorry for sounding harsh. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry about that. Sorry, right, another tool of the devil. Sorry about that. Let me just block him. Sorry. Sorry for sounding so harsh when I say this, but shame on you, women. Shame on you women who say you love Jesus Christ for even entertaining the thought of dating a Muslim man. When you know he doesn't love your Jesus, he doesn't have your God, and doesn't believe in your revelation. He has a counterfeit God, a counterfeit Jesus, a counterfeit revelation, and his book mocks the followers of Jesus, and you would dare fall in love with a Muslim man and marry a Muslim man, and then have his kids. And then on top of that, most of you end up divorced. What did you think? It was going to last? So let me say this in love. I'm sorry. I don't want to be mean, but I don't want to tickle ears. Shame on you, Christian sisters. You claim to be Christians who love Jesus, and you run to fall in love with a Muslim man. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? How could you do that? How could you fall in love with a man knowing this is... Don't you think that when I have children, how am I going to raise them? Now there's going to be a battle because he's going to want the kids to be Muslim. I want them to be Christian. How? How could you do that? It can't be because of the love or the sex, right? There is no love or sex that's that good for you to deny Jesus and betray him and then bring children in the world for them to suffer because of your selfish, wicked, sinful passion and lust. You know that, right? Sorry, guys, I'm not politically correct. 
I am not politically correct. And I don't want to be unnecessarily offensive, but it happens so often, it shocks and disgusts me. Just recently, I had to rebuke someone, a sister, in love with a Muslim man. How? And then asking me, how do I witness the Muslims? What do you mean, how do you witness the Muslims? You fell in love with one. What's there to witness? Okay. So you understand? This is what you're marrying into, and you're going to have kids influenced by this religion. A religion that says if a jihadi attacks your city, a jihadi attacks your city, he can then take you captive, rape you at will. And if you have a daughter that's nine, a nine-year-old, good enough to go. Okay. So let me ask again. Would any woman, decent woman, a woman with some moral virtue, willfully sleep with a captor who just got done pillaging her city, town, village, murdering her friends, loved ones, and her husband's still alive? Yeah, go ahead, sleep with me. But that's what the Quran says. Chapter 4, verse 24. Now convince me, Muslims, convince me, Muslims, this is not rape and adultery. Convince me. Convince me this isn't rape or adultery. Now you want me to show you how astonishing, how amazing God's true word is? You want me to show you how astonishing, how amazing God's true word is in comparison to Muhammad and his God? 2,200 years before the Quran. This is what the God of Moses said to Moses. This is what the God of Moses said to Moses. 2,200 years before the Quran. Brother, if you don't mind, post Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21, and this is in my article, verses 10 to 14. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. This is in my article. So I'm going to read to you what even scholars say about this passage. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Guys, pay attention. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Read this, guys. The God of Moses, 2,200 years before Muhammad. Look what he said. When thou goest forth, when thou goest forth to war against thine enemies, and the Lord thy God hath delivered them into thine hands, and thou hast taken them captive. Right? Now watch this. And you seest among them, you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife, that you want to marry her. Then thou shalt bring her... Bring her home into thine house. Watch. She shall shave her head and pare her nails. Shave her head and pare her nails, right? Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails. She shall put the raiment of her captivity off, take her clothes off in which you took her captive, so she doesn't even be reminded of her captivity, and she'll remain in thy house, and she will bewail, mourn her father and mother for a full month. You don't touch her for a month. And after that, thou shalt go into her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. She's not your sex captive. You don't sleep with her and then sell her off. You desire her, you honor her, and marry her and make her a wife. Verse 14. And it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, let's say after you marry her and it doesn't work out, then thou shalt let her go. Whether she will, wherever she wants to go, send her wherever she wants to go. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her. Wow. Do you see the difference between the God of Moses and the God of Muhammad? You find a beautiful captive woman. You take her home. Change her clothes. The clothes that, you, that she was taken captive in. Shave her hair. Trim her nails, signs of mourning. Give her a whole month to be alone to mourn. And after that month, you marry her and you don't dishonor her. And if it doesn't work out, like others, like as like women, maybe not work out, you divorce her, send her where she wants, but she's not your property. You don't sell her. So on Balang, I will bury Farid and your God with Numbers 31, 17 to 18. I'll have fun with that in a minute. Only a pervert like you and Farid can misinterpret the numbers 31 verses 17 and 18.
John Paul, can you post Al Bukhari another 50 times? Because I didn't see it the first 49 times. Right. You hear me there? Yes, and that's another thing. The only reason why Muslims will wait before sleeping with a captive woman, Miss V, I'm glad you mentioned it. The only reason why a Muslim will wait before marrying a captive woman is to see if she's pregnant. So that if she's pregnant, they know they're not the father, the child. Because then she becomes um walid. If they get her pregnant, she becomes um walid, the mother of a child, their child, right? So that's the only reason why they lay hands off of her. So if we take a captive woman, I'm a Muslim, it's not I can't sleep her right away. Wait to see if she's pregnant. Because if she's not, sleep with her. Because in case you get her pregnant, now she's um walid, the mother of your child, although even though she's your captive. So notice in Islam, you don't wait in order to give her time to mourn. That's not the reason. She doesn't matter. You wait to make sure you, she's not pregnant by you. So if she's pregnant by her husband, then you let her give birth to the child. Whereas in Deuteronomy, you give the woman a full month for the specific reason of allowing her to mourn. And it's not talking about captive women who are married. Okay, guys, do you see the difference between the God of Moses and the God of Muhammad? The God of Moses says, when you take a captive woman, you do not rape her. You don't have sex with her and sell her off. You honor her by letting her mourn the dead for a whole month, shave her head, pare her nails, change her clothes, and then marry her and love her as a wife, giving her the status of an Israelite woman. Okay, brother, I'll answer it. Where's the brother that asked me the question? Is he a Christian brother? Let's see. Where is he? I'll answer. If he's a Christian, I'll answer the question. The Christian brother asked me at Numbers 31, 17, 18. Suan, my brother, I love you. Can you, number one, let's look at Numbers 31, 17, 18. Since that came up, let me, let me answer it. Suan, let me answer it for you, brother. Okay? Let me answer. Let's see. Numbers 31, 17, 18. I want to give you a verse, Suan, that I want you to live by. Okay? I want you to remember this verse. It's Titus 1, 15. To the pure, all things are pure. But to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Their very minds and consciences are corrupt. Someone who is purified by the blood of Jesus, when he reads Numbers 31, 17, 18, not just 18, the Alzheimer's are kicking in. Numbers 31, 17, 18. They will understand this is mercy and compassion. But when a Mohammedan who's defiled, like their prophet reads it, he sees nothing but lust and sexual perversion. No, 17 didn't show up, brother. Are we going to have problems again? 17 didn't show up, didn't appear. Let's try it again. Numbers 31, 17 to 18. Okay, now watch, Suwan. This is for you, my brother. No, Korti, I'm not nice because David told me nice. In fact, I'm going to prove to you I'm not nice. I'm going to block you for being a filthy dog. Block Korti and send him out of here. See? That's what you get for barking. Bye-bye, Korti. Numbers 31, 17, 18. No, 17 is not showing up. First, can you help him? It's not showing up on his end. We don't want to delay. I want. I got a lot more stuff to talk about. Help him out first instead of just seeing your, your brother sink. You see your brother sinking and you're sitting there, hey, it's okay, I'll pray for you. Now, therefore, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman who has known man intimately. But all the girls who have not known man intimately spare for yourselves. All the girls who have not known man intimately spare for yourselves. Now, let's read verse 18. King Kong. No, no, hold on. No. King Kong, King Kong, brother. Hold on. No. Wait, wait. King Kong. Say that again. Tell me what to do again, brother. One more, one, one second. Tell me what to do again. Brother, can you tell me what to do again? You've been here long enough to know, right? I want you to repeat because if you don't repeat, you're going to get blocked. Repeat again and say, come on, Sam, don't block people. Say that again. Sorry, guys, because see, I tell people, don't be used of the devil, distract, but man, we just don't work. <sighs> and you wonder why I'm not growing. Okay. King Kong, you just distracted me. You got five seconds to repeat what you said. Okay. Numbers 3118, we're going to post it. 
Repeat what you said. Five, you're going to get blocked. Four, three, two, one. Send King Kong to Godzilla. Don't come back, brother. It's not for you. Send King Kong back to... Okay, King Kong, you responded. You're going to get blocked anyway. You don't like it? Find another channel. Don't come back, King Kong, please. Don't. You're not doing me a favor. Numbers 31, 18. Let's post it. Numbers 31, verse 18. Okay. But all the girls who have not known man intimately, spare for yourselves. Now, Siwan, can you show me where it says that these girls you're sparing is for sex? Numbers 31, 17, 18. Guys, focus. Focus, guys, by the grace of Jesus Christ. Focus. I just got done spending time telling people, focus. Don't let Satan distract you. Siwan, can you tell me where Numbers 31, 17, 18 says, you spare the young girls for sex? You spare the young girls for sex. Okay. Number two. Do you understand why God ordered the slaughter of the Moabites, the Midianites, and the women who had known men? Do you understand the context or no? Because to understand Numbers 31, you got to read Numbers 25 and Numbers 31 together. The reason why God commanded the slaughter is because the Moabite, Midianite women enticed the Israelites to commit sexual orgies with them in worshiping Baal. You with me there? Read Numbers 25, Numbers 31. And this was also done at the instigation of Balaam, Balaam, the false prophet. That's why he got killed too. Okay, understand the context. A group of Moabite, Midianite women, Enticed Israelites to have sexual orgies with them, perverted sexual relations in the worship of the false god Baal, Baal. So what God is saying is punish them, especially the women who are married, who know man intimately, who are used of the devil to entice Israelite men to defile themselves and sin against God. Punish them, but spare the young girls. Do you know why? Because the young girls are innocent. They didn't entice the men to sexual orgies and worshiping Baal. So what was an act of mercy on God's part when it comes to a Muslim in the hands of a Muslim becomes a text for sexual perversion. Do you see why Titus 1.15 applies to them? Titus 1.15, to the pure, all things are pure. But to the corrupt and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Their very minds and consciences are corrupt. What was an act of mercy? Spare these young girls. They're innocent. They haven't enticed the men to sexual orgies and worshiping Baal. Spare them. Adopt them into Israelite community. Teach them the ways of Yahweh. And when they're mature, they'll marry Israelite men and have children for Israel as they're now engrafted into the commonwealth of Israel. Ronnie, which part of the little ones wasn't clear? Ronnie, what am I talking about? The old ones, Ronnie? Ronnie, are you listening, man? I'm talking about the little ones, the little girls. Okay. Who am I talking about? I was talking about the little munchkins and the gremlins, Ronnie. Spare those little gremlins. Spare those little munchkins. Who am I talking about? The girls. Those are the little ones. Numbers 3118. Numbers 3118. Pretend you're listening, Ronnie, my brother. I love you, man. Guys, I want to be tough with you. It's not I want to scare people away, but I want quality people to focus, to learn your faith. Learn your faith. But all the girls, those are the little ones, who have not known men intimately, spare for yourselves. Spare for yourselves so you can defile them sexually? No. Bring them into the commonwealth of Israel. Raise them as your daughters. Introduce them to the God of Israel. And when they're mature and they marry an Israelite man, they will produce children for the God of Israel. And you want proof these girls can't be defiled? These girls can't be defiled? Yeah, so, so see, should I change the subject and talk about Numbers 31, 18 and talk about why God allowed the boys to be killed? 
Let's change the subject, so we'll see for you. Let's forget about Muhammad. Let's go to number 31. The only reason why I'm answering the girls part, because it's relevant about rape. But again, Christians just can't control themselves. Guys, let me retitle this. Hold on. I'm going to retitle this. Numbers 31, 17, 18 explain, because Christians don't know their Bible, because of biblical illiteracy, let's stop talking about Muhammad. Are you kidding me? Gary Susi, let's change the subject. The level of biblical literacy among Christians is astonishing, man. It's, it is. Okay. Now, whatever his name was, Sirong? I even forgot your name because Sulsi, wake up, little Sulsi, wake up. All right. Decided now. You know, Sam, I just going to make you change the subject. We're not going to talk about Muhammad anymore. We're going to talk about Numbers 31. Yeah, yeah. So you stop talking about Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What was that brother's name? Siwan. Siwan, are you here? I want to know because I'm addressing the reason why I'm addressing the girls part because it's directly related to the Quran, chapter 4, verse 24. God bless you, Siwan. Lord bless you. Chapter 4, verse 24. That's why I'm taking time to address Numbers 31. I've already done a discussion on Numbers 31, Old Testament violence. Now, C1, do you understand the passage is saying, spare them not because you can sexually ravage them, as an act of mercy on these young girls who did nothing to entice this Israelite men into sexual perverted acts, orgies, and worship of Baal. Did you get that? Thank you, Elias. God bless you. Secondly, so on. Do you know how I know they can't defile those young girls? Do you know how I know they can't defile those young girls? Because the same God of Moses also told Moses what you read in Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. And what did God say? She can't be a little girl. Because now notice the word is different. There was little girls. In Deuteronomy, it's women. Meaning women mature enough, mature enough that you marry them not have sex with them, defile them, and sell them off. So, so on. Now let's read Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Let's read that again. Sorry, guys. I don't want to be tough with you guys, but I got to rein you in. Exactly, Greedy Champion. Let me repeat what Greedy Champion said. I know more about the perverted Muhammad than my Bible, that's for sure. I need Sam. No, you don't need me. You need the Holy Spirit. We need to know our Bible, folks. Why do you sp think I spent 99% of my streams on Bible topics? Because the level of biblical illiteracy is disgusting among Christians. But Christians will flock to YouTube sessions and live streams about Muhammad. Hundreds and hundreds. Oh, yeah, Muhammad the pervert. But then when it comes to learning their faith, if we get 1,500 for a session, it's a miracle. You know where I started learning this? Jack Nicholson, even though your name is making fun. The Holy Spirit started teaching me by throwing me into the lions then and having lions trying to tear me to shreds by attacking my faith and me crying out to the Holy Spirit, please give me answers to these attacks on the Bible because the Bible is your word. And if you give me answers, I surrender to you to use me to then bless Christians so they can have answers. That's how. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Exactly, Pedro. If anyone truly knows the Bible and understands it and is aware of the massive, overwhelming, historical, archaeological, scientific facts, they'll be more in love with Jesus than ever before by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, C1, Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. How do I know that the Israelites cannot ravish these young girls? Because the same God of Moses said this to Moses. Just because it's written later doesn't mean it wasn't known earlier orally. Because what Moses wrote down, he would have preached orally. He would have told them the laws and then written them down. Okay, so what does he say? When you go out to the battle against your enemies and the Lord your God deliver them into your hands and you take them away captive and see among the captive a beautiful woman. Now, go look at the Hebrew. It's not the same word. Girl in Numbers 31, here it's women. Why? 
because it's a woman who's mature enough to be married. Those were young girls. They were minors that you take in, treat as daughters, and raise them, making them part of the commonwealth of Israel. When they're mature, then you marry them off. And see among the captives a beautiful woman, and have a desire for her, and would take her as a wife for yourself. Then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head and trim her nails. She shall also remove the clothes of her captivity, and shall remain in your house, and mourn her father and mother a full month. And after you, after that, you may go into and do what? Go into and do what? Rape them? No. Be her husband, she'll be your wife. It shall be, if you're not pleased with her, then you shall let her go wherever she wishes, but you shall certainly not sell her for money. You shall not mistreat her because you have humbled her. You caught it? Go read the text. Here, let me give it to you. What's the word here for woman? Let's see. Hold on. So I, the only reason why I stopped, this is related to the Quran. That's the only reason why I'm addressing Numbers 31, 17, 18. It is related to the Quran. So you see how amazing the God of Moses is, who's the God who became Jesus of Nazareth, unlike the God of Muhammad. Remember, this law of Moses, 2,200 years before Muhammad. And I'm going to read to you what the scholars say about this command in light of its historical context. I'm not done yet, but hold on. I'm not done yet. Wait. So thank God the Bible is being included as well. Okay. Let me just let's let's look at the words. So you know I'm not making it up. And I trust the Holy Spirit to give me clarity of thought by his grace and mercy for the glory of Jesus to make no mistakes and save me from error. Okay. Ishet. Ishet, the plural of ish. See? Ishet, the plural of ish. Isha, I'm sorry. Isha, the plural of Isha, because Isha comes from Ish. Here it is. Okay, take here. Just let's let's go here. Isha, the plural of Isha, which comes from Ish. That's where my confusion came in. Please, Holy Spirit, save me and illuminate me, not to make any mistakes, to glorify Christ. Now, let's see the other word here. And by the way, the word ish is the word often translated as wife. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Let's just check out here. Let me just go here. Notice here, you'll see the word. Go here and look. It says the young woman. Young, notice the qualifier, young. That's why it's girls, because they are young. Notice that qualifier is not in Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 14. Khatap, okay, there it goes right there, the young woman, okay? So when you go and see, go look at the word young woman. Here it goes. Here's the word khatap. So you know I'm not making it up. There you go. Little ones, little ones. So they're not women, they're little women, girls, little ones. Go see how that word is used. Little ones. There it goes. Khatap, this exact form of the word, here. It's used in several places. It means little ones. They're little ones. Children, the little ones in the livestock. The children, the women, the children. You see, okay. Not making it up. So, so the difference is in Deuteronomy 21, it's Isha, Ishet, plural, but without the qualifier, young. These women are said to be young. The qualifier is there. So they're girls, not women. Why the difference? Because in Deuteronomy 21, they're women. They're mature enough to get married. Here they're girls, young, young women, young girls. Why? They are too young, premature, immature. I don't want to use the term immature because I'm not saying they're mentally handicapped. And therefore, you show them mercy by bringing them into the household because they were not guilty in enticing the Israelites to commit sexual orgies with them in the worship of Baal.
You with me there? So does that understand the point? Deuteronomy 21, they're said to be women, not girls. Numbers no, 31, they are girls because they're said to be little young women. That qualifier, little young. There is no little young in Deuteronomy 21. It doesn't say when you find a little girl. No, a woman, isha, plural of isha. Here, Numbers 31, it's qualified what kind of women? Young women, little women, meaning little girls. Everyone got it? I spent a lot of time here. I'm embracing this fact. We're hammering it, right? Just want to double check again? Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. So you see it. The qualifier, young women. The Hebrew is not the same, meaning... The qualifier is not found in Deuteronomy 21. In Deuteronomy 21, you don't have young ishat, meaning young women. Whereas in Numbers 31, it's not just women from Isha, it's young women, little women. You don't have that qualifier in Deuteronomy 21. So I hope I wasn't confusing, and I'm trusting the Spirit to guide me into truth and not make any mistakes and protect me from error. Did everyone get it now? What's the difference between Deuteronomy 21 and Numbers 31? Deuteronomy 21, it's women. Isha, plural of Isha, no qualifier. Numbers 31, 17, 18, it's not simply women. It's the word young, little women. That qualifier shows they're young girls, little girls, premature girls. That's why you don't find the qualifier young in Deuteronomy 21, because those women are mature enough to be married. So again, let me repeat it, the final point, so it sinks in. Why did God say in Numbers 31, 17, 18, spare the young women? Because in the context, read Numbers 25, read Numbers 31, the mature women who are sexually active enticed the Israelite men to commit sexual immorality with them, orgies with them in their worship of Baal. But these young girls, these little girls, had nothing to do with their sin. So God says, spare them, because then you can engraft them into the commonwealth of Israel. They'll be given the status of an Israelite woman. They'll be taught the law of Yahweh. They'll come to know Yahweh, fall in love with Yahweh, and then produce children for Yahweh, increasing the covenant community. Right? Before I move on, I just wanted to sink in. I'm giving a minute to sink in. And the only reason why I went off topic to discuss this, because it's directly relevant, directly relevant to the Quran 424. But to then talk about why the young boys, then I'm going to go off topic. No, I won't. I'm only addressing that part because it directly relates to the point I'm making about Allah and his messenger Muhammad, how perverted and immoral they happen to be in contrast to the true God of Moses. So you can see the beauty of the word of God, the Bible, in contrast to the filth of the Quran and Hadith. Right? Okay. Brother Jack, I want to send you to Batman right after this. Which part of Numbers 25 and Numbers 31 wasn't clear? The 25 or the 31 or the 2 and the 5 or the 3 and the 1? When I just said, if you read Numbers 25 and 31 in context, the reason why God is punishing the Moabites and the Midianites is because the women enticed the Israelites to sexual orgies and worship of Baal. Did you understand Numbers 25, 31? Was it the two or the five or the three and the one? Which part you didn't get, Jack? Do I need to read those two chapters to appease you? Let me know, Jack. Jack, let me know. You're wasting my time. Let me know, Jack, because I just spent 20 minutes on a point you should have got 10 minutes earlier. Jack Nicholson, I'm going to send you to... <clears throat> it wasn't Tom Hanks. Tom Cruise. Jack Nicholson, you can't handle the truth. Remember that? You said that to Tom Cruise. 
You can't handle the truth, Jack. Okay. Now send Jack back to Tom Cruise. When you see Tom, send me an autograph copy from Tom. Get him out of here. Guy with a fake name. Of all the names. Everyone got it? Uh, depends. Why would you recommend a podcast if it's not kosher? It's not from a biblically based position that has faith in scripture. Are you recommending an attack on God or is it? Let me see. That God behaving badly. Is that a podcast that shows the justice of God and the holiness of God in what we find in the Old Testament or is it an assault against God? Let's see. Kingdom Strong Pontiff. Answer quickly, brother. I don't let people here promote their heresies and blasphemies against the God of the Bible. But you want to be clear. Is the podcast God behaving badly? It's going to honor the God of the Bible and understand these commands in their historical, cultural context? Or is it going to try to blaspheme God, demean God, by trying to show that these commands are draconian, and paint a less favorable light of the God of the Bible. Okay. Guys, when you get a chance to see if that podcast glorifies God or assaults God, let me know because I'll know what to do with this guy. I do not let people come to my stream to attack the Lord. We're up to 250. We lost already because you know why? Distractions. And then I get attacked. See, Sam, you're all over the place. You, you know, you can't control, you don't maintain order, you don't focus, and we get tired listening to you. I don't blame you. I get tired listening to me too. And it doesn't help me when my brothers and sisters in Christ can't stay focused. I don't blame you. I wouldn't listen to me too, honestly. If I was someone else li listening, I wouldn't listen to me. I wouldn't. But anyway. With that said, are we ready now to move on? As, are we ready to move on? Now, I'm tired of myself. Did everyone understand the difference and the contrast between what Allah of Muhammad said to do to captives with the God of Moses? Do you understand the difference or did you forget the point? Did that point sink in? Did that point sink in? That the God of Moses says, when you find a captive, you don't sleep with her against her will. You don't rape her. You bring her to your home, let her shave her head, pare her nails, change her clothes of captivity so she's not reminded of her captivity. Give her a full month to herself to mourn and wail. Then you honor her by making her a wife, giving her the status of an Israelite woman. And if you guys don't get along, you divorce her, send her wherever she wants. If she wants to go to Iraq, you give her her provisions and send her on the way to make sure she goes wherever she wants safely. You can't sell her. She's not your property. That's Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Deuteronomy 21, verses 10 to 14. Everyone got it? Did you get that? Exactly. The shaving of the head makes her less attractive in order to cure any lust in the person's heart. Exactly, Rose. If the man was just lusting for her, seeing her shaved and paired may be a deterrent so that he wouldn't simply marry her because he has lust. That he would marry her because he truly desires her to have her as his companion. Exactly, Rod. How many men are going to be attracted to a bald woman? Because remember, if she shaves her head, how long it's going to take for her to have a full set of hair? Right? So in case there was any lust, it was the lust moving the man to want to marry her? By her being less than ideally attractive, her head shaved, then the person, if it was lust, that lust would be removed. He wouldn't desire her, and he couldn't touch her. Right? You see the beauty? So it's not only giving her time to mourn. Not only giving her time to mourn. It's also putting the man in a state and condition to look at a woman for a whole month, mourning and weeping, right, for her loved ones, seeing her in the less than 
ideally attractive condition, ball, and by the time her hair comes back, she has a full set of hair, that will be months. So then he'll know, does he really want to marry her because he loves her, his soul is attached to her, or is it lust? If it's lust, this is going to cure the lust, and you can't touch her unless you marry her. And if you don't want to marry her, send her off. You get the, you see it now? Before I move on, we spent so much time in Deuteronomy 21. That wasn't my point, but all these issues came up. Is it sinking in? If you read the Bible on a shallow surface level, you're not going to see the wisdom. But if you seek the Spirit and ask the Spirit to illuminate you, and He will, either just by reading text, He'll illuminate you directly, or raise up teachers to show you the meat of Scripture to blow your mind away. You look at it and say, wow, what is this book? Right? Because if it was lust that drew the man to her, then that lust will dissipate. He'll be cured of the lust when he sees a woman that's bald and not as attractive as when he first laid eyes on her. But if he still desires her, then he knows it's not just lust. He does want to attach his soul with her soul, become one, and have a family. And in case it's lust, pay attention, in case it's lust, and that lust is removed, he can't touch her. You know that, right? Because what did God say? You marry her. You don't marry her, you don't touch her. You don't get near her. You don't have sex with her, sir. You got to marry her if you're going to have sex with her. So now you're not attracted to her, send her away. Leave her be. With me there? You see what God did, right? He made sure there is a white man knew that it wasn't lust that moved him to want to have this captive woman, that he truly desired her enough to love her and marry her. Because if it was lust, guess what? You can't touch her now. You can't touch her. The only way you can touch her is if you marry her. And if you don't want to marry her because you don't want to be stuck with her, can't touch her, give her provisions, send her on her way, leave her be, she's not your pop property. Okay, Gamaliel, now you have it. See how God works? In a message exposing Muhammad, we glorify Jesus Christ. In a message exposing Muhammad, we end up glorifying Jesus Christ, showing how amazing he is and his word, how amazing his word is. Okay. Okay, now, let me show you what the scholars say about the command, this command. Here it is from this article. I gave you the article, but I'm going to send it to you again. Here is the article again. Okay? Watch here. Let me read it to you. This comes from Dwayne L. Christensen, Word Biblical Commentary. Notice what these scholars say about this passage in light of its historical cultural context. Remember, this was written 20, 20 years before Muhammad by Moses. Notice what it says here. Excuse me. The law focuses on the rights of the woman by stating that the man who marries a female prisoner of war and subsequently becomes dissatisfied with her, for whatever reason, is not permitted to reduce her to slavery. Such a woman had legal rights in ancient Israel, and moral obligations ensue from the fact that the man initiated a sexual relationship with her. Perhaps the most significant conclusion to draw from this text is the respect for the personhood of a captured woman. A primary concern in the laws of Deuteronomy 21-25 is for protecting the poor and vulnerable in society from exploitation on the part of the powerful. You see that? This. What's the most significant conclusion of this? The respect it gives to the personhood of the captive woman showing that she's a person of value. You cannot oppress her and dishonor her. Dwayne, Dwayne L., Dwayne L. Christensen, Word Biblical Commentary, Volume 6B, page 475. Now, another one. Robert Alter, Robert Alter, The Five Books of Moses, a translation with commentary, page 982. This is all in that article. The articles will be in the description box, God willing. 
throughout the ancient Mediterranean world, captive women, notice, historical context, of vanquished peoples were assumed to be the due sexual prerogative of the victors. See, once you took a captive woman, that's the mindset of Muhammad. Muhammad had the same mindset. They're yours, sexual property. This law is exceptionally, seeks to provide, this law exceptionally seeks to provide for the human rights of the woman who falls into this predicament. The verb ina is also sometimes used for rape, and its employment here astringently suggests that the sexual exploitation of a captive woman, even in legally sanctioned arrangement of concubinage, is equivalent to rape. You know what it's saying here? If you sleep with her without marrying her, you are raping her. And God says, you better not rape her. That's what he just said. You see what it's saying? It's saying that to sleep with a captive woman in the eyes of the true God is rape, and you better not do it. You understand that Muhammad's God ordered raping of women who were captive, even married women, meaning Muhammad's God is no better than the gods of the pagans, and he cannot be the God of Moses. Because the gods of the pagans said, when you take a woman captive, she's your sexual property. You can exploit her and have sex with her and do what you want. God says, no, you can't. That's rape. And you better not rape her because she's a person of value created in my image. You honor her by marrying her. You understand the difference now? Okay, let me read a couple more, two more. Bear with me. This comes from Craig Kroger and Mary J. Evans, the IVP Woman's Bible Commentary. They edited Catherine Clark Kroger. Did I say Craig? Please, Holy Spirit, save me from mistakes. Sorry. I'm saying my eyes are going bad. I need reading glasses. Lord, perfect my sight spiritually and physically for your glory. Edited by, not Craig, Catherine Clark Kroger and Mary J. Evans, the IV IVP Woman's Bible Commentary. Pages 100 and 102. Watch. Watch this. Okay. The instructions given for the treatment of female captives in Deuteronomy 21, 10 and 14, take it for granted that a conquering army have the right to dispose of the conquered population in any way that it wishes. It is hard for those coming from a different cultural context to see this as anything other than appalling. But this approach would have been unquestioned within the ancient Near East, and we have to see these instructions within that setting. Light of historical cultural context. Now watch. What is remarkable is that although the woman may have had no choice in the matter, the soldier who fancied her has every right to make her his wife. Nevertheless, her identity as a human being is at least to some extent recognized. She is not to be thrown into the new situation, but must be allowed time to mourn for her parents and her past life. Within these oppressive situations, the laws are geared to provide at least a level of protection for the woman involved. Women who were bought as wives or captured in war and taken as wives could not be sold as slaves or even neglected. Exodus 21, verse 11, Deuteronomy 21, verse 14. Finally, Ian Cairns, Ian Cairns, Word and Presence, a commentary in the book of Deuteronomy, right? Page 189. Finally, I can give you more, but here. The space given for weeping is not primarily a period of mourning, though it is perhaps to be assumed that the woman's father has died in the Kharam. Chapter 20, verse 13 and 15. Rather, it is given in compassionate consideration of the large, adju large adjustment she must make and the accompanying trauma. It is an acknowledgement, too, that her former life is ended and a new life is to begin. Compare following Psalm 45, verse 10. The hints of compassion breaking through the brutality of the age reflect an awareness of divine compassion, however limited by the thought Climate of the times. Everyone got it? Okay. We spent a lot of time on this one issue. But why? Because I want you to, I want you to see the God of Muhammad is not the God of Moses. The God of Muhammad is not the God of Moses. See, the God of Moses has pity on someone like David Wood and saves him and still uses him in spite of his narcissism his mental condition, and his desire to control and dominate people. 
right? Because God loves him and will use him and change him. The God of Muhammad would have had him killed or at least in prison for life, right? And that's why we love David. We put up with him and we support him for the sake of Jesus. And by the way, it's not L-M-A-O, deuce. It's L-M-B-O. How many times am I going to say that? Okay. So everyone with me there? Did we get that part? Did we now expose the moral filth of Islam? That was just the first point, folks. It's already been 100 minutes. First point. Thank you, Layla. God bless you. God bless you, super chatters. Lord bless you and reward you. Do you see the difference? Muhammad's God says, take captive women as, as booty, as sex slaves, rape them, sleep with them, sell them off, even marry captive women. So Muhammad's God endorses, sanctions, permits adultery and rape. Adultery and rape. You with me there? Adultery and rape. Did it sink in? That's the first. You know, I'm going to have to do a part two on Muhammad's morality. Got to do a part two. Okay. Adultery and rape. Now, the second problem. Muhammad prostituted women in the name of his God and called it temporary marriage. He called it temporary marriage. Okay? Let's get there. This is all in my article. Okay? Those articles that I sent you, it's all there. Here, let's go. Are you ready now for Muhammad prostituting women, treating women as whores, but calling it Zawaj al -Muta? Temporary marriage. Are we ready? Are we ready for that? You guys know this. Thank you for still listening to this. You've heard this so many times, but thank you for coming and listening into it again. Just let it be second nature where you can then recall this information and use it to glorify Christ and expose Muhammad. Muta. Zawaj muta Let's read about it. Now, again, you need to go to the article for the Hadith references. Because it's too hard to copy and paste hadiths and post them in the channel. Lord willing, I'm going to try to use StreamYard next time. Maybe if I use StreamYard, I can then show you my page. Let's see how it works. God willing, we'll work on it sooner than later. Because I do want to make this channel as best as possible for the glory of Christ. And beatified for the glory of Christ to draw people who are sincere and want to learn. Not be distracted or distract or pontificate. Find somewhere else to go. Okay. Sal Bukhari, volume 7, number 52. Sal Bukhari, volume 7, number 52. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah. This is Sal Bukhari now. Narrated Jabir bin Abdullah and Salama bin al aqwa While we were in an army, notice army, Allah's apostle came to us and said, you have been allowed to do the muta. So do it. Salama bin al aqwa said, Allah's apostle said, if a man and a woman agree to marry temporarily, their marriage should last for three nights. And if they like to continue, they can do so. And if they want to separate, they can do so. I do not know whether that was only for us or for all the people in general. Abu Abdullah, meaning Al-Bukhari said, Ali made it clear that the prophet said the muta marriage has been canceled, made unlawful. How ironic, folks. Bukhari says that Ali, of all people, Claim Muhammad, then cancel Muta. I'll get back to that in a minute. Here's another narration. Sal Bukhari, volume 7, number 13-0. Sal Bukhari, Sal Bukhari, volume 7, book 62, number 13-0. This one, you really got to remember this one. Because it gives you the verse for Muta. It gives you the verse for Muta. Okay, what do I mean it gives you the verse for Muta? Does anyone know which verse of the Quran sanctions muta, temporary marriage, zawaj al muta? No, Hafsa. Bukhari said, Ali said, Muhammad abrogated it. That Ali said, Muhammad abrogated it. Does anyone know the verse for muta? Yeah, depending on the tradition, it's 424. There's another one. It's not 424. If you don't read the Hadith, you won't know. Do you know what other verse supposedly was sent down to sanction temporary marriage, which is nothing more than prostitution? Chapter 5, verse 87. Hater Wood, who steals my material 
and then uses it to blow up and become famous and get 1,500 people for his boring live stream, just said it. I've taught you well, young Padawan. But the sad thing is, I'm your Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you are my Darth Vader. Okay? Chapter 5, verse 87. Chapter 5, verse 87 of the Quran. Here it is. Let me read it to you. This comes from the Hadith. Here it goes. Chapter 5, verse 87. I gave you the, the Bukhari, Sal Bukhari, volume 7, number 13. Narrate Abdullah. We used to participate in the holy battles led by Allah's apostle, and we had nothing with us, had no wives. So we said, shall we get ourselves castrated? We're burning, O Allah's messenger. We can't control our sexual lusts. Should we castrate ourselves and be done with it? He forbade us that and then allowed us to marry women with the temporary contract and recite it to us. Recite it to us, O you who believe. Make not unlawful the good things which Allah has made lawful for you, but commit no transgression. Chapter 5, verse 87. Thank you, Jay. God bless you, brother. Did you guys catch it? Muhammad said, Surah Al-Maida, I-87, sanctions you. Don't make this unlawful. You don't need to castrate yourselves. Allah is making it lawful. Go to the village and say, ma'am, madam, my name is Abdul Rahman. My name is Abdul Jabir, Ibn Abbas, whatever name. Can I marry you for three days? And I promise you, for those three days, I'll be on my best behavior. behavior. When I'm done, I'll give you some money. Oh, you agree? Let's get it on. You with me there? Now, let me ask the sisters here again. And I'm going to read a few more narrations. Let me ask the sisters again. Which one of you, if you have an ounce of decency, if you have an ounce of decency, unfortunately, there are women who are so demonized and their conscience so seared, they don't care. Now, don't get me wrong. There are many women who are into prostitution because of their circumstances. I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying they're right. But at the same time, if you hear their stories, many of them were sexually abused by a family member. Many of them were abandoned. And many of them saw no way out except prostitution in order to be able to support themselves. And unfortunately, some of them even have children. And so they're in this system in which they think the only way they can survive, the only way they can manage is if they allow a man to file their bodies for money so they can care for themselves and children in case they have some. So they are broken human vessels. Human vessels broken by a satanic world a satanic system where Satan knows if he attacks children at the home, then he destroys the children and they grow up to become psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, physically damaged and become misfits. That's where King Jesus, Jehovah Rapha, Jesus Rapha, the healer, must come in and flood them in his love, transform them by his love and heal them by his spirit. Thank you, Vagabond. God bless you. Thank you so much. So I'm not saying you have a lot of prostitutes who do it because they don't care. No. A lot of them, if you go and listen to them because they're humans and you hear them out and you hear them out and listen to their story, you'll be broken to tears why they ended up where they're at. Either because they were raped or abused as a child or abandoned as a child, or even given up and been raised in foster homes, and they feel belittled, they feel worthless, they feel they have no integrity, no honor, and they feel this is the only way they can survive by allowing a predator, a pervert, to prey on their bodies so they can have money to take care of themselves and or the children that they may have out of wedlock. And they need Jesus. I'm going to share a story with you. I heard this. Now, I can't verify whether it's a true story, but I heard this from, and, a, and I believe it was, yes, 
Lord Jesus, please forgive me if I'm wrong. Please remind me. Because again, I'm asking the Spirit to save me from error and confusion. Please correct any mistakes in me, not to repeat them and save them from my mistakes. Please, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus Christ. I believe it was an Assyrian nun, an Assyrian nun that shared this story. I think it was her. She told me a story about a priest. Okay, listen to the story, folks. See, I'm actually I'm getting teary-eyed thinking about the story. Okay. And I and I don't want to start crying because then Dave's gonna say I'm a big sissy and I'm a I'm just crying for money, you know, tears for dollars. And you know, yes, he's a hater. All right, but focus. He said there was a priest that would go. Yeah, I'm about to have. now some of the Roman Catholics may get upset. Please don't be upset. Please just understand his heart. He would go and he would hire a prostitute, one particular prostitute every night. And he would take her to the hotel room, not to sleep with her. He would pay for her services because she was from a Catholic background in order to pray the liturgy in front of her and pray over her. And every night he would do that and just offer up prayers in her presence to move her with the compassionate love of Jesus and so that she can be drawn back to her faith. Yeah, he never touched her. He never touched her. He would pay for the services so he could have her for those two or three hours, but he never touched her sexually. All he would do is take her and he would recite the liturgy and pray. See, I don't know the rest of the story, I Freddy Ruckel. I don't know, but what a beautiful man! What a heart of Jesus! See, I'm getting moved in my spirit. What a heart of Jesus! Pay for her services so that her pimp thinks she's doing what she's doing, but instead, honoring her, dignifying her, loving her with the love of Jesus, and showing her the beauty of Christ. Right? May we have that heart. May we have that compassion. May we be Jesus to them. Yeah, anyway, this just moved me. Just thinking about it, it's humbling. Right? That he would do that. Anyway. Focus, guys. Hazel eyes, focus. Don't see again. You're letting Satan to distract you. See again. You guys are letting Satan distract you. My goodness, you guys. <whistles> Pathetically bad. Come on now. Focus. 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 Lord Jesus, bring them to listen to this. And they focus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Let me read some more narrations. Let me read some more narrations. Here it is. Now, even though the Sunnis will tell you Muhammad abrogated Muta. Even though the Sunnis will tell you Muhammad abrogated Muta, right? There are Sunni traditions, traditions in Sunni hadiths that say that Muta was being observed up until the time of the caliphate of Umar ibn al-Khattab. That it wasn't abrogated during Muhammad's life. It wasn't abrogated during Abu, Abu Bakr's life and his caliphate. It was only abrogated by Omar, but then he reinstated it. Okay, let me read that to you. Here, let me show you. Here, Sahih Muslim, book A, number 3248. Sahih Muslim, book A, number 3248. Ibn Uraj reported, Ati reported, that Jabir bin Abdullah came to perform Umrah. This is Sahih Muslim, folks. Sunni tradition. And we came to his abode, and the people asked him about different things, and then they made a mention of temporary marriage, whereupon he said, Jabir ibn Abdullah said, yes, we had been benefiting, you filthy pervert, you dog, benefiting from whoring women, you dog of the devil. You're no better than your prophet, the slime of hell. Yes, we had been benefiting ourselves by this temporary marriage, during the lifetime of the holy prophet, you mean the unholy filth of the devil, and during the time of Abu Bakr and Omar. Did you catch it? According to Jabir ibn Abdullah, 
They were doing muta, benefiting from whoring women, prostituting women, up until the caliphate of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Here it is. Here it is. You see it? This is your Muhammad. This is your Muhammad. This is your religion. And shame on you for calling him holy. If this is holiness, I wonder what filth is. If this is holiness, I wonder what filth is. Okay, but now let me read this. You know what's more heartbreaking? Here's what's more heartbreaking. Women got pregnant as a result of muta and gave birth to children who for all intents and purposes, and I'm not saying this disrespectfully. Follow me. I'm not saying this disrespectfully. Bastard children. Illegitimate children. Right? Because the intention wasn't to get her pregnant and have a child with her. The intention was to defile her sexually, to satisfy your filthy, lustful cravings, and pay her for her services. Here it is. This is Malik's Mwatta. Mwatta of, uh, of Malik. I believe it's... Anyway. Malik's Mwatta, number 28, <clears throat> Section 18, number 42. You get the link. Book 28. Okay? Now watch here. Yahya related to me from Malik, from Ibn Shihab, from Urwa bin Az-Zubayr, that Khawla ibn Hakim came to Amr ibn al-Khattab, Amr ibn al-Khattab, and said, Rabbiya ibn Umayyah made a temporary marriage with a woman, and she is pregnant by him. Omar ibn al-Khattab went out in dismay, dragging his coat, saying, this temporary marriage... Had I come across it, I would have ordered stoning and done away with it. But you can't, Amma. Okay, folks, did you catch it? Did you catch it? Because of Muhammad and his God, women were treated as whores, prostituted for money, and then up getting pregnant because of Muhammad and his God. Now, let me ask you women this question. Let me ask you women this question. Let me ask you this question. Which one of you... Which one of you, as decent women, honorable women, if you are honorable and decent, would allow a man to come up to you saying, hey, uh, Hafsa, hey, uh, Renee, Hatu, whoever you are, you know I want to marry you for three days? What's today? Today's Saturday? Can I marry you till Tuesday and then divorce you and I'll pay you what, 500 bucks? I'm, I'm calling it marriage. I'm going to marry you till Tuesday. In fact, can I marry you till next Saturday? I want to marry you for seven days. Seven days, you come to my house. We'll be married. When I'm done, I'll give you $1,000. Now, can any of you convince me? Convince me. Convince me this is not prostitution. Can any of you prove to me this is not prostitution? Islamic style. Prove to me this is not treating women as whores, as prostitutes, because of some sexually perverted men or men who do not have enough self-control, whose God is not powerful enough to give them self-control, right? <clears throat> Sick, sexual, perverted, lustful men preying on women to whore them, to gratify their lusts, and paying them for their services, but trying to mask that up and call it marriage. And this is Islam. This is the religion of Muhammad. This is the teaching of Muhammad and his God. This is the teaching of Allah and Muhammad. And yet Muslims claim that Allah is the God. Allah is the God of Muhammad. Now you have another filthy demon and dog, Devran here, a son of Satan, who doesn't want to. Defend Muhammad. Now, Devran, can you call me on Skype so I can educate you on Exodus 21 and use that to bury your prophet, Devran? Can you or no? Will you call me, Devran? Don't call me Devran. Don't insult me. I don't want to be a dog like you. But will you call me and debate me and see how well you do twisting Exodus 21 and defending your, your whore prophet? Devran, are you there? I'm going to give you my Skype name. Can you call me so we can debate, see if you can defend your prophet?
Like a coward, you ran to the Old Testament, but you can't defend the filth of your prophet. Devon, are you there? One more time, buddy. Or I'm going to have to send you to Mecca to smooch the black stone. You there? Are you there? Hello, sir. Speak up. Devrin, come out to play. Devrin, let's talk about Muta. Stinking coward. Won't defend his prophet, he attacks the Old Testament. See these cowards? You tell me these men have any honor and integrity? Do they have any honor or integrity? I'm talking about your religion and what Muhammad did. At least defend it. At least stand up and defend it. They won't do it. We're not like you. We don't run from the Old Testament. We have answers unlike you. So now, remember how I began the session. Let me remind you how I began the session. Let me show you how I began the session. You remember what Muhammad said to that man? Remember he said? He goes, would you like people to do zina with your mother? He said, no. They don't like that you do zina with their mothers. Would you like them to do zina with your daughter? He said, no. They don't like you do zina with their daughters. You remember that? Remember I began it, and it's in the articles that I gave you. Do you remember I began with that narration from Ibn Kathir on Quran chapter 17, verse 32, right? Do you remember that narration? But did you see Muhammad did not practice what he preached, right? Because what did Muhammad do? He raped captive women who are married, even though Muhammad would not want people to rape his women, his wives, his daughters, if they took them captive, especially they're married. Muhammad prostituted women, prostituted people's daughters, people's sisters, people's mothers, and yet he would not allow for men to prostitute his daughters, his wives, or his mother, if she were alive. In other words, Muhammad is the epitome of hypocrisy, the epitome of immorality, the epitome of filth and demonization. The real miracle, the real miracle, folks, is that people think Muhammad is a prophet. The real miracle, folks, is that people think Islam is the religion of the God of Abraham. The real miracle is that people think the crown is a miracle. That is a miracle. A miracle of Satan, not of the true God, who has blinded these folks from following a grossly immoral sexual pervert who condone and sanction prostitution, adultery, and rape, and then abolished adoption to save, save and cover up for his adulterous lusts for a married woman, the wife of his adopted son, which will be in part two. Lord Jesus willing, I'm going to do a part two. I may not do it tomorrow. I may do it Monday because we're already over two hours. What I want you to do, today we had about 260. I want to keep that number high. Quality, not quantity. But more quality people, let's try to get 300 for the glory of Christ. People want to learn. Not distract, not pontificate, not change the subject. Pray, hit the like button, re-watch all these sessions. You have my permission, download them, upload them to your YouTube channel, or take clips. But Lord willing here, I want to ask you guys something. It's a Saturday night, and I had no choice but to come on late. Right now, it's 8.30 p.m. New York time. If you guys are interested, at 10 p.m. New York time, 10 p.m. New York time, 7 p.m. That's what? One, and a, one hour and a half? Let's make it 7.30 p.m. 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. 10.30 p.m. Eastern time. I can do a live Q&A session tonight because there's nowhere to go. At least there's nowhere to go for me. I'm all alone here with nowhere to go. I don't have my daughters. If you're interested, so in two hours, in two hours, which will be 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I know it'll be quite late for people in UK. I will open up and answer objections and questions, a live Q&A, if God is pleased, if the Lord Jesus is pleased. There's one question I'm going to answer right when we start, but I'll open up the floor. If you guys are serious, then I want to see the same number. We had over 200. Invite people, guys. It's a weekend. Don't tell me you got to sleep and wake up tomorrow because we're pretty much locked in our homes. 
because COVID-19 is on a spike again, and it's not fully open, and I suspect they're going to shut us down again. In fact, with that said, do pray. Do me a favor. Do pray for my childhood friend, my best friend from childhood. Him and his wife got COVID-19. They've been knocked out. They've been bedridden for the past week, and they're afraid that their kids now got it. They got them sick. What's ironic is I was going hiking with them. I was hiking with them. So pray I don't have COVID-19. Pray that God will miraculously heal them and God will heal me because that's what I'm starting to suspect. Is that why my throat is bothering me? The reason why, folks, I don't have health insurance. God's will be done. If he wants me to get COVID-19 and he wants to use that to take me home, as long as I'm washing the blood of Jesus and filled with the spirit. But if the Lord wants me around, pray God will miraculously protect his family, right? I call him Zach. Zach, I don't want to give too much details because he doesn't want too many family members to know. Pray for him, his wife, and three sons because one of his boys has asthma. They need miraculous protection. So they went and they found out they are COVID-19 positive. Pray I don't have it and that Lord will keep me healthy because I don't have health insurance. And pray the Lord Jesus protect my daughters. Okay? So please pray, guys. COVID-19 is not a joke. It's not as bad as they make it, but it's not... <clears throat> How do I put this? It's not as bad as some people want to make it, but it's no joke either because they're bedridden. He's knocked out. It's been a week. And remember, I was going hiking with him. Who knows? Maybe I got it. I hope not, and I don't want to infect anyone. But remember, we serve a risen Lord who is almighty over creation, the blood of Jesus that destroys all diseases, all viruses, all cancer. So I'm trusting Jesus to be my doctor because I have no health insurance. So pray for that. So you guys up for it two hours from now? God willing? Two hours? You sure? You're going to come back? We had about 260, man. Don't disappoint me. Two hours? Live Q&A? All right, then write down your questions. Write them down. Lord Jesus willing, in two hours, I'll be back. Invite people. Tell people. Live Q&A. Answer your questions as the Spirit leads me. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Crucify our flesh. Wash us in the blood of Jesus. Save me from my flesh, not to sin against you but to be enslaved to the Holy Spirit and bless these sessions and bring us together for the glory of Christ in Jesus' name. Lord willing, see you two hours, God willing. Christ is risen, risen indeed.